to, to have you here. So happy to, to, to start this, this Instagram live from Colombia. Uh, as I told you, we are in Spain, Panama and Colombia. We are a, 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 an, an agency, mar uh, marketing agency. We follow you everywhere. Uh, I am also a teacher at universities and uh, our suggest and your tools and your videos. Uh, all of them are part of my classes. So for me, it's a very big pleasure to have you here. Believe uh, me. I... <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Okay, Neil, I, I, um, I hope you are safe and sound and your family also in this situation we are facing right now, uh, which is not easy for, for nobody. And I want to, 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 to start this, this chat. I, I know you are a very um, occupied person, so I have many questions. You are the, the main guest here, so uh, please uh, teach us several things we have to learn from you, okay? Sounds good, and thank you for having me, and uh, I hope you're safe and everyone in your family is okay as well in uh, uh, Latin America. Did you say Chile or uh, uh, Colombia? Yes, Colombia, Colombia. We're in Colombia, oh. but we, are, we, are, we, are, we have uh, clients, customers in Spain, in Guatemala, Honduras, Ecuador, and uh, we are working too much but with the Spanier world. Okay, so... Uh, in this situation, I, I have a, a very big question. I, uh, I want to know your, your thoughts regarding that. Uh, which new opportunities are popping up in, at this moment? Uh, several companies are closing, several companies are uh, cutting uh, people. So uh, how do you uh, look for the, for the future? What do you think about that? Sure. So a lot of companies are closing, but at the same time, there's new opportunities that are opening up. Um, in all parts of the world, we're seeing e-commerce boom. E-commerce boom, off. yes. So when one door closes, another one opens. So I want everyone to look at new opportunities um, and look for long-term ones. Like, for example, in the United States, a lot of people started selling face masks, you know, that you wear over yes. your face. But everyone is selling face masks. It's a saturated space. But here's an interesting stat. Roughly 12% of commerce is, only, is done online. 88% is done offline. That number is changing. So an easier, more long-term bet would be, hey, why not try to start selling more online? Because the money is moving towards the web. It's moving towards digital commerce. Things like e-commerce is more of a long-term bet that will still do well. Selling yes. face masks. Yes, you can do well in the next few months, three, six months. If you've been selling them, you've probably already started seeing a decline. But in the next year or two, e-commerce will still be booming. Yes, but uh, my question is that, uh, okay, right. Uh, e-commerce is popping up. Many people is doing e-commerce right now. Please invite them to your course. I, I am following, I am following you, right now your course in, on, on, on YouTube. It's amazing. Uh, and I have Thank several other students following it. Uh, what we can learn there, please uh, uh, tell everything we will, we will learn in your course because I recommend it for everybody. It's pretty nice, pretty, pretty nice. So we have a free course called e-commerce unlocked, right? Teach e-commerce marketing. And it teaches you how to drive traffic to your e-commerce site, how to optimize it so you can rank on Google, how you can uh, drive sales and optimize for conversions teach you how to run paid ads, teach you how to leverage Instagram, Facebook, Etsy, uh, and all the other sites and platforms out there as well to generate more demand for your e-commerce store. Yes, right. It's, uh, I recommend that, that, that course because it's very, very nice. Neil, okay, but many companies uh, have done nothing regarding digital up to this moment of the, of, of the, of the world. And right now they need to start. And we know as an agency that you have to do a lot of things to be digital, to be real, uh, really digital. So my question is from where the people can start to digitalize or to do marketing because you need to do ads, you need to create your e-commerce, you need to uh, create the strategies for, for leads. So at the end of the, of the things, it, it's too much to be faced. Yes. And so what do you recommend to start from, from where? So you, you can keep it really simple. The easiest thing to do is you can leverage mm. shopping feeds. 
So shopping feeds gets your products on a lot of other channels that can help drive you sales. That's one place that I would just start off with. The second thing that you can, and I teach that in e-commerce unlocked for free, of course. And then uh, the next thing that you could end up doing is SEO. It provides longevity uh, from creating content to getting backlinks. If you don't want to spend time doing SEO, start off with shopping fees. And then the second thing to do is run paid ads. Paid ads. That's it. Paid ads works really well in e-commerce. Okay. Okay. Yes, uh, that's true. And uh, Google Shopping, what do you think regarding Google Shopping? Do you like it? Or uh, which one do you prefer? Shopping or uh, search ads? Uh, I mean, search with text one. I prefer both. As long as both. I can spend money and make more money, I'll do them all. Yeah. I like oh. all the channels as long as it's profitable. The moment it's not profitable, then I slow down and I spend less. Okay. And another question that many people have, uh, have right now is, okay, we need to do too many things, external or internal team. Uh, which one is better? Uh, to hire an agency, to hire people and do it inside? Well, I want to know what, what are your thoughts regarding that, please. There's no right or wrong answer. I think you can do well with external teams and internal. I've seen them both work well. Sometimes I even see companies have external teams and internal and have them work together. So you just got to see what's right with your company because if you're a massive company like Amazon, you're going to have both. If you're a startup, you may have one or the other. If you're a medium-sized business, you may have both. You just got to figure out what's right for you. Okay, okay. So we have to figure it out. It's what I understand. Uh, okay. Uh, and what do you think about the culture because at the end of the, of the day, the tools are the tools, but you need to incorporate inside your company uh, a culture, a, a digital culture. And I think this is one of the, uh, of the um, uh, hidden parts of the, of the history because uh, people think that this is just put money on ads and that's it. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't work that well. Uh, you have to end up tweaking, you have to end up fine tuning. Um, And I, I teach that for free. I have a page called neilpatel.com slash training. And I have a lot of courses. One is on SEO, one's in e-commerce. I'm about to release another course on content marketing. Uh, and then from there, I have some short courses coming out on like YouTube SEO and Instagram and ads and stuff like that. But, um, y you know, the overall point I'm trying to make is you, you can, you have to fine tune, tweak, test. There is no right or wrong answer. A lot of times people think, Oh, my competition's doing it. If it works for them, it'll work for me. Even if someone has a very similar product to yours, what works for them in many cases will not work for you. So you have to keep tweaking and testing and trying new things. It's all about experimentation. You are telling something that is pretty important. And I want you to, to, to tell our audience uh, uh, that you need definitely tools. And you have a very nice tool that is called Oversuggest. So without tools, we cannot do it, uh, nothing. Why do you use tools as your tool? Uh, I, I, tools make life easier. So the cool, the, 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 the purpose mm. is if you want to do a lot in marketing on with very little money, use tools to give you leverage. It allows you to do more in less time and cheaper. And uh, I'll keep releasing more tools for the community. Like in the next six months, I'm working, the next big tool I'm working on is called Uber Send. Oh. And uh, it'll be email like MailChimp, but unlimited contacts and unlimited sends for free. Yes, yes, yes. So nice, you don't nice. know long, that way you don't have to pay for email. Wow, amazing. Hey, you are a, <laughs> I admire you because this kind of tools, still the free version of your, of your software is amazing. We recommend it too much for doing keyword research, for doing Uh, web page analysis for doing everything is it's a, 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 a must be in, in each campaign we we release okay uh, Neil I have a very big question for you what do you think about TikTok the, this new uh, net uh, many people is telling several things uh, perhaps the, the United States close it what do you think about TikTok companies must be there should wait what do you think about that 
see, at first I thought companies weren't there, but it looks like they're starting to come. Like I see lawyers on there who are giving advice and generating yeah. business from doctors and plastic surgeons. Um, I think businesses will come. Will there be as many businesses as LinkedIn? No. Will there be as many businesses as YouTube or Facebook? Probably not. But it's so popular, businesses have no choice but to use it. Now, the real question is, is it going to be banned in the United States? Yes, yes, yes. So <laughs> yes. no one knows that answer. Facebook is probably hoping it gets banned because it would help them, right? Because it would crush their competition, at least in one of their main markets. But um, yeah, no one knows if it's going to be banned or not. Are you using right now uh, TikTok or, or are you out of, the, of that? I have an account. I mess around with it, but I haven't created too much content because I already don't create enough content for Instagram or Facebook yeah. <laughs> or LinkedIn. So I'm like, I just don't have the time right now. You have many things to, 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 to feed. Yeah, that's uh, right. Uh, Neil, uh, uh, okay, so uh, right now many people is unemployed. And we know each company in the world needs marketing. Where to start? If, if you are a psychologist and you are a, a, I don't know, a, whatever you want, and you want to, to, to be digital, uh, what do you recommend for, for, for them? Uh, so, look, if you're starting off, I would, Microsoft released this study, and Microsoft said the most valuable skill you can know as a marketer over the next 10 years is SEO. Because SEO. it just drives traffic, yes. And if I was starting off in almost every business, I would start with SEO first because if you stop spending money, you can still generate traffic, right? So you have to, the way I look at it is if I do paid ads, even though it's great, if I stop spending tomorrow, I get no more results the next day. Mm -hmm. So with SEO, if I can rank and I can rank, well, sure, my rankings may fluctuate up or down, but in the long run, I'm going to keep getting traffic and that's the valuable part about SEO. And that's what I'd recommend there. I have a lot of free articles. Actually, funny enough, I have a training course called uh, SEO unlocked and you can find it on the Neil Patel website. And I release all the training for free. Yeah, for free, for free. It's, uh, I love it. Okay. So SEO is pretty important, but um, it, it, SEO is huge. You have to do technical things, Uh, link building, you have to write content. So yeah. <laughs> again, uh, which are the steps I, 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 I most follow if I want to, to, to be a, a, a SEO expert? So the first thing I would do is one, set up your own website. You can go to WordPress, set up your own website, because if you set up your own website, you're much more likely to uh, practice on your own site once you get the results. It's much better than just reading. If you read and you understand all these theories and concepts, but you don't know how to implement them, it doesn't matter. So the first mm -hmm. step is setting up your own website if you already don't have one. The second thing is pick a niche. Once you have a niche that you want to go after, that's awesome. The third thing you want to do is use tools like Uber suggests to do keyword research to find mm -hmm. popular subjects. If you don't know What's popular in your space? Just type in any keyword. It'll give you more recommendations or you can type in competitor URL and it shows you what keywords they rank for. Mm -hmm. The fourth thing that I would do is then once you have your keywords, you go after the ones that are popular in Uber Suggest and have a low SEO difficulty. So those are keywords that are popular and easy to rank for. I would then take those keywords and then I would go and try and um, optimize my website for them. What I mean by that is create content around them, uh, put those keywords in the title tags, the title of the post, meta description. And then from there, I want to go and publish the content and then share it on my social profile so that way it gets more exposure. Then the next thing I want to do is email all the people that have been discussing these topics on the social web. Like you can search on Twitter to see who's tweeting out these kind of articles, ask them to share your content. And that'll start getting you traction. The last thing I want you to do is Put in competitor URLs into Uber Suggest and go to the backlinks report. It shows you who links to them. Reach out to some of those websites and ask them to link back to your site. Mm. And that'll help get you more links, which will then get you higher rankings as well. And that only works if your content's good. If you write crap content or have crap pages that people don't care for, it's going to be harder to rank and get those links. Very nice. <laughs> you told everything. is in a very quick way. So thank you very much. I, I want you to explain us, uh, I know it, but uh, our audience, I, I, I want you to tell them 
the cornerstone uh, method you use, the, the, the articles and how the content uh, flows again, the, uh, again um, sorry, near them and send internal links and everything like that. Could you explain it more to us, please? Cornerstone uh, method. See. So here's my structure with content. I'll first break down how I write content and then I'll break down how I link to it and make it popular. So the first thing I do with content is I try to come up with a popular headline, something that people like. If you're not mm -hmm. sure how, what headlines do well in your space, in Uber Citus, if you put in any keyword, just click on the content ideas report and it shows you what's popular based on the social web. Usually the ones with more shares are headlines that are good, the ones with less are headlines that are bad. This will give you an idea of what's good and what's bad. Next, I want you to write your introduction for your blog post. After you write the introduction, keep in mind it needs to be conversational. Uh, you need to hook people on, uh, bait people with questions. So for example, if I'm into uh, football, right? You guys play a lot of football or soccer, whatever you want to end up calling it. Uh, you know, wouldn't it be amazing to be as good as a football player as Neymar? Mm. Well, you know, he has some natural abilities and he practices, you know, tens of thousands of hours. But how do you get good without spending all that time? Good. I can't teach you how to get as good as Neymar, but with these 10 hacks, I can teach you how to be a much better football player than you are right now. And then that would be my introduction. I'm making it up. I don't know much about soccer or football. And then I'll do the subheadings. And then I'll create paragraphs under each of them that explain each hack. And then I'll wrap up the post with a conclusion. And that's the main structure of my post. At the end of my blog post, I always ask a question because that encourages comments. I keep my uh, paragraphs no more than five or six lines in general. Yes. I you try to use the words you or I within my content because it makes it seem like we're having a conversation. And include images, media, videos, wherever you can to provide value and explain what you're trying to convey with your message. And then, of course, the other thing you want to do is you want to cite your sources. So if any time you get a stat or data from some other site, mention them, link to them, let them know. And then, of course, you want an internal link within your own content between your own pages because that helps them rank higher. And then if you have detailed guides or thorough piece of content, you can create like a resource section in your sidebar and link to those important pages because they'll help you rank higher. And on top of that, what you need to do is when you link out to people, email them and just say, hey, John, I just wanted to let you know I linked out mm. to you. Check out the post here. Uh, you have amazing content. If you like it, feel free and share it. That little thing will help you get way more social shares and even some of those people will link back to you. But that's my strategy with content. It's simple, takes a little bit of work to get used to, but once you get it up and running, you'll do well in the long run. Neil, and what is going to happen with Hummingbird? Because at the end of the day, people start more and more speaking with, uh, with, with Alexa, with uh, Siri. Uh, and when you do as, uh, SEO, when you do SEO uh, and you make your best for writing and writing and writing, but at the end of the day, the people uh, doesn't want to write, to, to read that, just listen, a quick, a quick answer. What do you think about it? What, what, what to do? Well, it, it's okay. So uh, in the United States, according to Comscore, this year, 50% of the searches will be voice search. Huge. So it's already popular. Um, and a lot of them are from phones when people are driving, although they shouldn't be, you know, talking or not talking to their phone when, they sh when they're driving, but... Uh, you know, nonetheless, voice search is happening on tablets, phones, Alexa, Google Home. The mm. amount of devices are endless. Now, here's the key. If okay, you're the, okay. provides the content and the value, you're going to still build brand equity. And most of the people that are looking at voice search, it's mainly questions like, what's the weather? You know, what's two plus two? It's questions like that. What's the latest in news? It's not necessarily queries that you make a lot of money from. It's mm -hmm. informational. But still, you want those queries coming from you because it helps build a brand. Mm. Neil, how long it takes to you to bring your site from zero to millions of, of visits? <laughs> Inspire us, please. It, it takes years. I don't want to tell you you're going to get there within a day or so. It, it really does take years. So if you don't have the time, you don't have the energy, you want to, well, you need to be able to give it years. Uh, you can get yeah. thousands of visitors, you know, in months or six months or you know, even a year, you'll get traction within the first three to six months. 
you won't rank at the top right away, but in the long run, you can do really well as long as you're patient and consistent. Most people don't do well in SEO because they're not consistent. If you're consistent and you keep putting out new content, you keep getting the social shares, you keep building the backlinks, that's how you win. I'm not a better marketer than you or anyone else. What allows me to do well is I'm consistent. I just keep at it and I don't give up. And if you do that, yes, sometimes the tactics that you try will work. Sometimes they won't work. But in the long run, you'll do really well. We need to experiment. It's what I learned from you. Uh, uh, re release experiments and try, 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 try. And you, you are going to learn. Yes, uh, uh, I, I don't believe in, in, in SEO people that sell services, but you look at them, uh, their websites and no content, uh, domain authority and page authority very, very low, no one link. So at the end of the day, you need somebody that really does it. So, so uh, for one of the things I, uh, I face the most here is that there are many people that sell uh, uh, um, crap. So what I mean is that they, they are selling fog. You know what I mean? They are yeah. selling real services. So uh, uh, for me, it's very hard to uh, teach the customers, hey, this uh, costs this amount of money because this is real service. Don't believe in the people that say you $300 and you will be in the trip. <laughs> But it's pretty hard uh, to uh, culturize or to, 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 to teach them uh, these kind of things because at the end of the day, SEO is a, is a, is a niche. It's not, not too many people know uh, this, this knowledge. So it's one of the uh, hardest parts of, of our work right now here in Colombia and in Spain and in Panama. Yeah, and, and, and over time, it'll get better and better, but it's just going to take time. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Take time. Uh, Neil, uh, I don't know if you want to, 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 to tell... Uh, okay, L uh, let's say I want to start selling right now. and I, I, I will not make a, a, an e-commerce. Uh, the first recommendation for your course is start by Amazon. It's the, it's the principal part to, to, to be on Amazon, right? Or what, what do you think? Uh, I, I have started by my own e-commerce. Should I have a, a start by uh, Amazon? What do you prefer? Your own website? You're asking if I'm an e-commerce store, do I prefer my own website? Yes. Amazon? I do both. Like, both. There's a lot of popular sites like Legion Athletics that sell supplements. They sell really well on Amazon and on their own site. Why not do both? Yeah, yes. Yes. The thing is that, uh, okay, but for Latin America, um, it's not very popular. Uh, Amazon right now is, is, is coming to our markets. And you can buy there, but uh, perhaps it's a, it's a very good moment for companies to create their own e-commerce uh, before Amazon get in the markets with, yep. uh, very hard. So I think it's, it's a very nice uh, situation. Okay, and regarding platforms, Do you have any recommendation uh, for platforms? I don't know whether uh, Shopify uh, e-commerce can uh, rank yeah. higher than WordPress or something like that. Do you, do you, do you have some information if, if, regarding that? If you're doing e-commerce, my favorite platform is Shopify. Has the most plugins, flexibility uh, for newbies and beginners. Even they have some enterprise version as well. Of course, yes. if you're custom coded or go with Magento or any one of those, there's a lot of amazing solutions, but my favorite is still Shopify. It's the easiest to get up and running. The UI is great. It's not hard to use. And they have a lot of extensions, plugins uh, in their Shopify store that you can add on that gives you way more functionality and helps you generate more sales. Yes, and, and the nice thing is that you, you don't need to, 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 to know how to code in. It's, no. It's, it's, uh, yes, I I love the, the the world that we are facing because uh, things are so easy now. I remember when I started uh, 10 years ago, you 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 need to know how to code. Right now, without coding, you can do whatever you want. It's amazing. You can click some buttons and you're off to the races. But yeah, when I first started off, if you didn't know how to code, you didn't have a website. Yeah, yeah, yes. Do you know how to code? Are you are you used to it? I can code um, basic. HTML, CSS, and basic PHP, but that's it. Okay, I, I, this question is very important because at the end of the day, you are not a programmer and you are doing very nice things. So uh, it's just the concept, the strategy, the 
uh, programmers are, uh, are there, you, uh, you can uh, tell them how, uh, what to do, but at the end of the day, what, what is important is the consistency. Uh, I want to do this and I want to go out. Uh, and very nice. Neil, uh, I have no more questions for you. I don't know if, if you want to teach something more right now so, uh, because this is going too fast. Um, I'll give you one last lesson. So, you know, the best thing that I've learned in my life is we all make mistakes. It doesn't matter if you're Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, we all make mistakes. The best thing you can do if you want to succeed in marketing or anything is as you make mistakes and fail, learn from them. Avoid making those same mistakes over and over again. Eventually, all you'll be left with is the stuff that you should be focusing on and the stuff you should be doing. And that's mm. the key is in which we'll all make mistakes, but the ones who succeed learn from their mistakes. They don't make the same ones over and over again. Mm. I have many questions for audience and people is telling me, hey, we are asking things and you are not uh, answering us. So let me... Angie, please write me questions there because there are too many things. If you can filter for me, please, the question. Angie belongs to my team. Angie, please write me there the questions to, to Neil. Uh, Angie, are you hearing me? I can try to see. Okay, okay. I'm going through some of them right now. Okay, so one question from Daniel is, hi, Neil, how do you see SEO changing in the near future? The way I see SEO changing is a winner take all. Right now, if you are ranked number one, two, three, four, five, six, you still get traffic. But because of the popularity of voice search, I believe ranking number one is going to be even more important in the next few years. Mm -hmm. And I also see SEO being combined into more offline devices, not just Alexa, not just in Google Home, but eventually you'll see search results within your fridge. Your fridges will have computer screens on them about products that you buy, like bread, milk, or your your stove and oven will give you recipes, right? All these are places where you could potentially rank more and more. But yeah, that was, uh, that, that's how I see SEO changing. Yeah, yes. I, 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 I read a question, a very common question for, for, for me. What do you think about drop shipping? It's real that you can't get money from that? You can make money. A lot of people who make six figures a month from that. So dropshipping is a big business. There's a guy's name, the uh, Tan Brothers. They're based out of Singapore. They teach you how to make millions of dollars from dropshipping. Yeah, because I, I, when you think in dropshipping, uh, it is not too much effort to, 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 to do a, a, a shipping uh, strategy. So when no effort, everybody can do that. So how to be different? Uh, in, in, in a market that everybody can get in so easily? It's one of my biggest questions. You, you don't have to be different. See, everyone believes you have to be different or amazing if you want to create a big company. You can make $100,000 a year being the same as someone else. If a space is big enough, who cares? If you're making enough money to be happy, you're great. You don't have to make millions and millions of dollars. You don't always have to differentiate. You just have to be good enough for people buy from you. Good enough, yes. The nice, nice lesson for for me. You have to be good enough, and that's it. That's it. Uh, Sell for podcast is is easy. It's a, it's a very good question. Right now, we are starting a podcast here. Uh, we are having uh, um, listeners. Uh, we have right now more than than five thousand uh, listeners in Spotify. But it, I I want to know uh, also. Uh, for uh, SEO for, for podcasts, how to do that? Do you know something about that? Yeah, so uh, SEO for podcasts, you just uh, make sure you include keywords. So that way you're within the, you're, you're getting found within like the iTunes store or the Android store. But in addition to that, what I found the biggest thing is just be as descript descriptive as possible with your titles uh, and the show notes and also show as many episodes as possible. So some people only want to show their latest 10 episodes in these feeds or 100 episodes. We show them all because they all have keywords in there. So when people are searching, you get more traffic. Google mm. is also deciphering these podcasts and putting it in within search results. You're not putting too much emphasis on that yet. It's out. Okay, I don't know why. I I am facing connection problem. Okay, do, do you hear me? Sorry. 
I don't know. I I I have a flicker. I can hear you. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, uh, Neil. Which more questions do we have from the from that? Neil, how do you start your career in, mar in digital marketing? What steps do you recommend for someone new in this world? So remember how we talked about earlier, start your own website, create content, do keyword research, rank it. That's where I would start. That's how a lot of people that I know learn because if you can rank your own website, you get good at it, you'll be able to rank other people's websites over time. Okay. Which, most, which more questions do we have here? Let me... Uh, okay. Uh, how can one increase customer acquisition? Okay, we, we, we answered that. Uh, okay, Neil, Neil, what's your advice to enhance your personal brand? It's a very good question because at the end of the day, personal brand, uh, your personal brand is very powerful. So uh, tell us more regarding that, please. I would go live on the social web at least a few times a week, two to three, post on social media at least once a day, write at least one blog post a week, uh, create a podcast, release at least one episode a week. Now you don't have to do all of it, but the more you do, the better. With personal branding, it's about consistency. Uh, I believe in the thing called the rule of seven in marketing, which when someone sees or interacts with your brand seven times or more, they're much more likely to evangelize you, love you, and you'll find that your conversions go up. So the key is how can you go out there and you know just make it where people continue to see you and the easiest way is to keep pushing out content. Hmm. One of my biggest, um, um, I, I have, so many people come to our company without the profile we want to attract. A lot of the small, very, very small businesses, uh, for me it's very hard to say no. Uh, if you are an agency and a small agency as, as or agency, um, how uh, how to say no? We are not for you because this can damage your brand. Because at the end of the day, you will look so fancy, so snap, so, 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 so what to do uh, regarding that, that problem? You just say no, and then of yeah. course when you tell them no, tell them why and then give them free advice, whether it's blog posts, eBooks, PDFs, give them free advice to help them out. So that way you're not left with nothing. Yes, it's, but because right now uh, in, in the last three months, we received a lot, a lot of, of quotation requests. And it's normal because uh, everything was closed. People want, wanted to, to, to start digital. So it's, it is very hard to, to say no, 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 no. Because at the end of the day, say no. We, we are not prepared to say no. <laughs> we, you, we are prepared to say yes everywhere. And you want to help everyone out. And I get it, but you can't please everyone. So learn to say no, but give them advice at the end and help them out for free. Let them down softly. And that way, at least you're helping them out. See, saying no isn't a bad thing because if you can't produce results for them, saying yes to them means that they're going to take their money, not produce results, and it's going to hurt them. So mm -hmm. explain why you're saying no and telling them what they should do is better than taking their money and they'll appreciate it in the long run. Yes. Neil, I have a very nice question here. Catherine, uh, she was my student uh, two weeks, three weeks ago. How do you deal with haters or people that interact about other things different than your business? So you, you kill them with kindness. It's the same we use here in the U.S. in which you always be nice to them even if they're mean to you. Or you can just say, no. uh, Yes. Sorry, I, I mean you. Did you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Either okay. I, you, you be really nice to them even if they're mean to you or you ignore them. I would do one or the other. Okay, ignore. Okay. Uh, Neil, I, I, know I don't have more questions here. I don't know. Uh, I want to thank you with, for your time. You are a nope. very, very occupied person. I, I know that. Thank you very much. The, uh, you changed my life. Uh, uh, I see all your videos. I recommend you everywhere. Uh, I follow you. Uh, our agency has a lot of, of, of learnings from you. So it's time to, to, to say you thank you. Thank you for being with me, with my, my audience. I will keep this in our uh, Instagram TV if you allow me, please. And uh, I, I will go on 
I'll marry you for the rest of the life. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me and I really appreciate it. Take care, everyone. Okay. Bye-bye, Neil. See you. Thank you. A todos, chicos, de verdad. Eh, muchas gracias por haber estado aquí. Fue un placer haber tenido a Neil Patel. Eh, y bueno, gracias por, por, por conectarse. Esto va a quedar grabado. Y de verdad los invito a que vean los cursos de Neil Patel. Eh, son maravillosos. Eh, tiene ahora uno muy bueno de e-commerce. E eh, pueden verlo todos y lo recomiendo. Está en su sitio web. Yo lo estoy siguiendo. Y hay muchas cosas que yo ya sabía, pero estoy recuperando nuevamente. Entonces los invito a que, a que lo vean. Les mando un abrazo para todos. Que estén bien. Chao.